Good morning. This is going to be the first of my videos um, directed for my daughter who um, I've been not had time over the summer to teach algebra to and um, to get her to really love mathematics the way I would love her to love mathematics. But this is, uh, I thought I'd open it up for everybody. So I, I uh, want to introduce myself. My name is Diana Thomas. I am a full professor of math at the United States Military Academy. Um, I've taught since 1991 at Georgia Tech, uh, in West Point, New Jersey City University, um, and Montclair State University, and now I'm back at West Point again. Um, I've seen thousands of students come through my, my doors. Um, some of them hate math. A lot of them hate math. Um, and it's really made me think about why students hate math, and it really starts very early. Um, and so one of the things that I've seen is that um, and all of this from student feedback has shaped my teaching philosophy and also the evidence of what's out there. So the first thing is that um, students um, today learn things in a staircase manner. They've had for, for a while now. So you learn how to combine like terms and then you learn the laws of exponents and then you learn how to uh, write a sentence into translate a sentence into math formulas. Um, all the while you're gearing up to actually solving a, a, a real problem, a problem like finding X, but you're not actually finding X. You're going up into a list staircase of disconnected things and all of a sudden you're trying to use them all. Well, that's not really how we learn. Human beings don't learn that way. We don't sit down into the stadium and get 12 lessons on different parts of baseball and then play a game. We learn by playing the game. And so it'll be a little unusual. I'm not going to step, step up a staircase. I'm just going to go from day one, start solving problems. That's the point. When students miss the point of why we're doing what we're doing, then um, it becomes harder for them to stay with us. When I was a junior in college in 1990, it was the first time I used Stephen Wolfram's Mathematica. I heard that there was a piece of software that would do algebra for me, and I was there in a heartbeat because I make these mistakes. I'm going to talk about mistakes, but um, oddly enough, the way we teach math hasn't changed, and these um, technologies have surpassed any, any of, my, of my imaginations. Um, and they're ac accessible to our students on the internet. Um, so there's Desmos and there's Mathway and Stephen Wolfram has his own Wolfram Alpha. So I will be using that to show, to show things um, um, to, so your children can use it at home. That's what we should be doing. It's a tool. And when we solve problems, we use all the tools at our fingertips. I do. When I'm doing research, I don't sit there and pretend I don't have Mathematica in front of me. I use it. And so you don't, don't have access to that on a standardized test and you don't have access to that at school. And so I'll be talking about what to do at school on a test versus if you're at home and wanna do things like check your work. And I'll also be using spreadsheets. The best way to program, and many of our kids love to program, is start with a spreadsheet. So even today, I'm going to show us, uh, in this module, I'm gonna show stuff with a spreadsheet. Uh, uh, something that irks professional mathematicians is that um, our students come into our classrooms and they want to just race through things and you try to slow them down. Usually we can't slow them down until they get into a proof writing class and they stop fighting you and they say, okay, there's no other way. I'm going to have to just slow down. There's no prize for finishing first. Slow down and finish right. In fact, um, my sister had told me when she was taking tests that she felt like she was under pressure and that's why she was racing through the problems. Um, we sat side by side and we just ran an experiment where I was carefully going through the process and she was doing it her way. I actually finished first because I was, it was clear and in, there was no doubt of what I was doing. So I didn't have to go back and go, where did I get that from? And so I, and I, I ended up with the problem right. Not only did I finish first, I also ended up with the problem correctly. So I'll be focusing on form. Um, you wouldn't want your kids shooting baskets in a game as a granny throw. But it's bad form. You want them to have good form. In the same way, we want them to have good form in math. And so I'll be pushing that. It's the way to win. Math is supposed to be fun. Uh, we love puzzles. And uh, unfortunately, the math we learn in school is geared towards things like 
algebra and the nightmare of pre-calculus. Pre-calculus is a methods course. Um, algebra is less so of a methods course, but and calculus is a bit of a methods course. But if you go to the MoMath, uh, again, it's a Stephen Wolfram. This is his day today. Um, if you go to MoMath in the city, take some on some outings. Work on puzzles. There's open problems that are accessible. There's a book called The Number Devil that I recommend. That's it's just it reads like a storybook, but it has the latest open problems in number theory and combinatorics. I love math, and um, that's going to show in what I do here. Uh, John von Neumann said it much more eloquently, but I'm going to dumb it down. He said something along the lines of, you don't learn math, you just get used to it. And so that's something I'm going to hammer in here too. I don't expect uh, people to be masters of algebra, kids to be masters of algebra by going through the modules. I just want them to see it, to understand it, but to actually do it, you have to do lots of problems. Mastery requires lots of problems. Um, I use some problems out of this Shams outline. So $13.39, it's just a book of worked problems. And these books are excellent. They have Shams outlines, even all the way up to things like topology, which is probably a high level undergraduate course. And um, if you want your students, uh, your children to actually do well and master algebra in the summertime, have them sit down with Shams outline. Um, how I'm designing this, I'm designing this for my daughter. She's right now in classes. She's in the sixth grade. They're doing Singapore math. So I'll be bringing in some of the stuff that she does in class um, and going over it here. But um, this is an intro while kids are in school. So they already have homework and I don't want to pile on more. I just want a couple problems to get your feet wet and make sure you understood everything we're doing. All right, if you have questions, um, you can email me. My email is Diana Thomas underscore Diana at hotmail.com. Just email me. And, um, you know, you want your child to me to look at something your child's doing. If I have time, I will do that. Um, like I said, the first course is that, you know, my daughter ends up liking math a little bit more and um, gaining mastery of algebra. So let's get into it. What's algebra for? Um, why do they make such a big deal about it? Well, it's to find unknown numbers. It's the most powerful tool to find an unknown number. What do I mean by that? Well, if I have two times mystery number plus one is equal to five, um, that mystery number, I could just look in there and go, oh, well, maybe you see the answer. It's two. Um, but is there a process where I can find that answer systematically without guessing? And so that's algebra gives us the process to do that. Because it's a process, there are people who have developed computer programs, and maybe you can develop a computer program too, to find these answers systematically. Um, I'll leave that to you. We'll go to spreadsheets, uh, a spreadsheet in a second to look at that. Um, to look at something like this. So if you just open up Microsoft Excel, I have 2x plus 1 over here, and I've labeled uh, in my first cell, A1, I've labeled this x, and I'm going to label this 2x plus 1. And over here, I just put 1, 2, 3, 4 as my candidates for that mystery number, which we already know the answer is uh, 2. But if I over here, I put, I want to get 2 times x plus 1, how I do that is I put an equal sign first. The X is in cell A2. So I'm going to do 2 asterisk is times A2. Instead of X, I'm going to put A2 plus 1. And then I make my cursor into a little small cross, and I hold my shift button down, and I drag. And you see that I get 5 when x is 2. So this is the automated guess and test method. I'm just going to guess and test by automation. Um, and I'm going to do this more than once. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things how you can check work and do things on Excel. But spreadsheets are really nice because they let you test things out. So we are looking for a way to find that the answer is 2 without doing this.
So how do we solve that systematically? Even though we know the answer, let's see how to do this systematically. Just to remind you, when you were little, you had this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, parentheses come first in order of operations. This is when you're combining numbers. Exponents come second. We're not going to deal with these right yet. Then comes multiplication and division. Then comes addition and subtraction. When you are trying to peel away and find that mystery number, you're going to go backwards. So to go forwards, you put numbers together. To peel away numbers, you go backwards. So let's look at an example. This came from the Shams outline book I mentioned earlier. Here I have two. Instead of the box, I'm going to use X. Mystery number X, 2 times mystery number X, plus 7 is equal to 11. You might see the answer and just guess the answer by looking. But we're going to do the process. So if I wanted to peel everything away and get X by itself so I can have the answer, the first step is to undo any added or subtracted numbers first. That's because I'm going this direction. The thing keeping 2x or x from being by itself is the plus 7, so it goes first. How it goes is I do the opposite of plus 7. That's minus 7. But I have to hit it on both sides. So a couple mistakes that people commonly make right here is they start to deal with this 2 first because they're racing through the problem and they're trying to just get x by itself and that they just see, oh, 2's there. And so they'll do something with the two first. Always go back to good form. We're going backwards. Added or subtracted gets, is gotten rid of first. The second mistake people have uh, that I've seen quite a bit is that they do it to one side, but they forget to do it to other. Does this mean they don't know to do it to both sides? No, I'm sure they know. It's that they were rushing through. That's what I think is the biggest thing. In fact, I know it is because I've asked students, why'd you get this wrong? They said, well, I, I was rushing. So if I add straight down, 2x comes down, 7 minus 7 comes down to 0, and 11 minus 7 comes down to 4. Or another way to say this is 2x is equal to 4. Notice that there's nothing underneath the x's, so it just came straight down, and I have this 0. That was the point. I wanted it to go away. And then here I get 4. Another weird thing I've seen also is people try to get rid of the 11. So they um, work here. Again, keep your eye on the prize. The prize is X. It's X that you want to keep, uh, get by itself. All right, here's the 2X equals 4. And there's something I should have put an intermediate step here. But um, the next thing is that uh, I've gotten rid of all the things that are added to the X junk. Now I want to get rid of the thing that's multiplied to the X junk. The opposite of multiplication, I have 2 times x, I want that 2 to be gone. The opposite is division, so I'm going to divide. Now I should have done 2 divided by 2 is 1. And I skipped that step. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 times x is x. That's where that x comes from. Good form. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And voila, I've got x is equal to 2. Now, how do I know this is the right answer? I need to check my work. So I just plug it back in there. I put two back in there. This is if you're on a test. There should be no reason that you don't get everything right on your test, or at least you know if you're right or wrong. You might have something wrong, um, but at least you'll know. So check your work by putting the two back in and see if it comes out. If I put two in here, two times two is four. Four plus seven is 11 and they match. The left side equals the right side. But you can also go, there's many places you can go. This is Wolfram Alpha. Um, they've developed a computer software that can just solve equations for you. It does a lot more than that. Um, Wolfram Alpha is probably the most powerful of these uh, tools online. Um, there's also Mathway and Desmos does some graphing for you. Let's hit enter. 
and look, it has X equals two. So this is how you can check your work at home. Just run it through Wolfram Alpha and see if you're right or wrong. At school, you don't have Wolfram Alpha, so you have to do this. Um, you have to do this manually. Okay. This is my recommended homework. Um, this should not take you long. Um, this three x this is almost identical to what I just did. This one here, um, you will have to. You, it is a little bit tricky. You'll need to multiply at the end to get rid of this three. This three is being divided. X is being divided by three. The opposite of division is multiplication. The same with the five here. So it shouldn't be too taxing. You can rewind and watch the parts again and just follow along as you're doing your problem. So now I'm going to show you a more complicated example. Here, uh, I'm, using, well, uh, I'm using the Shams outline book. They've switched from X's to N's, but the point is still, I have an unknown letter, N, um, and it's appearing on the left side. And I wanna, I wanna get N by itself. The game is still the same. The problem is I have some extra work to do. This problem's more complicated because before I had something X plus something is equal to something. Now I have two of these letters um, separated two separated junk with ends in it. So this is what we say we combine like terms. If I have a 13n and I have another n here, I really have a total of 14ns. So 13n plus n is 14n. So the 13n plus n goes away and becomes 14n. So uh, a common mistake is, um, uh, see, again, I think this is a rushing mistake. Someone will do 13n plus n is 14n and leave the n over here uh, by accident. So I've seen stuff like that quite a bit, actually. Um, and now what we have is a problem like the previous one. I, it looks almost exactly like the previous one. I can just run through the process I already have. So I get rid of anything that's added or subtracted. It's a process. So um, four is being added, so I subtract it from both sides. And I get 14n, come straight down. The four minus four is zero. 39 minus four is 35. So I just copied that onto the next slide so you can see where I'm going next. Then I get rid of anything multiplied or divided um, by the n. So the 14 is multiplied, so I divide both sides by 14. And I get n is 35 over 14. And that's a fraction, two and a half. So let's see. I am not going to check that by hand. Um, so that's my smiley. Um, mathematicians can be pretty lazy as well. So let's... Um, Let's uh, do this. 14n plus 4 is uh, 39. Let's do this um, on Wolfram Alpha. Plus 4. This is what happens when you get old, you forget things. And you see five halves. Um, if you go down here, they, they might have decimal form if I click that. 2.5. 2.5 is two and a half. So it's the same. What's nice here about Wolfram Alpha is also give you a step-by-step -step solution to see it says subtract the four from both sides. The method is there. Very nice. Um, recall that we actually had 13n. Plus, uh, a plus an n here. Let's see what happens um, if I just put that original problem. I still get five halves. But in the step-by-step -step solution, let's see what it gives us. It automatically put it as 14n. So it combined it before, uh, before step one. I guess that was too trivial for Wolfram Alpha. So here's a couple to try that are along the lines. 
This one's a bit tricky here. This uh, number four is almost identical to what I just did. You're going to have to combine the like terms first. But on here, um, you have 10 is equal to 7 plus n minus n over 2. Um, that can be a little tricky. My recommendation is to put the 7 plus n minus n over 2 as your left. You know, if 2 is equal to 2, 2 is equal to 2, you can switch the, put this on the left and put this on the right. Turn around the equations. What I mean by that is rewrite this as 7 plus n minus n divided by 2 is equal to 10. So that it looks a little better. And then the like terms, this is 1 times n. So you have 1n minus a half n. This is really... one half n, so n divided by two is the same as a half n. So you have one minus a half. So think along those lines. If you can't get this, shoot me an email and I'll give you another hint. But you're gonna have to send me some handwritten work. Take a picture of your work and send it to me as an email. All right, this is the last one for this week. So here, this is different than the previous problem I did because I have an R on both sides of the equations. And many students ask me, what is that, ma'am? What is that? That's an R. Those, those are Dr. T's R's. Um, so I have 3R plus 10 is equal to 2R plus 20. So I actually have to get, I, I tell my students who are beginners just to keep any letters on the left as a rule. Don't start working with the right and the left. So the first thing is to make it look right the way you had before. And um, that would require you to get this 2R over to that sign. Students can find this confusing because you know, say, well, how do I get rid of 2R? Well, I have to subtract that entire term, 2R, from both sides to move it to the left. And now, unlike before, I've got R stuff lined up with R stuff. So 3R minus 2R is 1R. And the 2R minus 2R is 0. And the 10 just comes down and the 20 just comes down. Pretty weird. Every time you see something new, it's pretty weird. When you see the same thing again, it's not as weird. Again, it's because you get used to math. If I simplify this, 1 times R is R plus 10. And on this side, I have 20. Now it looks almost identical even easier than what I've had before. R plus 10 is 20, remove the A or the D, added or actually that should be S. So move it, remove anything that's added or subtracted. Um, so that's the plus 10, so let's subtract that. And I get r is equal to 10. I don't even have anything multiplied or divide here to deal with. So the next thing is to check your work. This is fairly easy to check my work. I put in 10 for r on this side and 10 for r on that side. And uh, what I get is I get 40 on both sides, so it works. If you want to go to um, here, Excel to see that, who's gonna use Excel anymore, right? Three times X plus 10. Just, we call this R. R and then here we have two times R plus ten. So um, when are these two equal? Basically, this is the left side and this is the right side. And then I have here. I'm going to put three times a two plus 10.
And here I'm going to put 2 times a2 plus 10. And then um, I'm going to highlight both of these and bring them down. And you see they're not equal yet. Let's see if this will do it for me. Yeah, it'll do it for me. So until I think we found the answer 10. Oh, sorry, this was 20. And now you see right here, they're both equal. So that's the automated guess and test method. And it only works if you don't have fractions. I can, I can build it in so it has fractions in it, but right now I'm just doing something simple in a spreadsheet just to see if I'm right or wrong as guess and test by guess and testing. So homework, try these out. Um, here you have a 5n and a minus 3n. Um, and then here I have a 4u and a 5u. So give it a shot.